In this session, we are going to learn how to use SSH interpreter for performing remote debugging. So, I have one remote VM instance available. It is Ubuntu operating system. There, first I am going to connect via SSH. Then I am going to set up the SSH interpreter. So, first let me go to tools, start SSH session. Here I need to enter the details like host name, username, password, etc. Let me enter those. So here there are different authentication types, password, key pair, open SSH, etc. I have the password available. So I am using password only. Click OK. Now if the login is successful, immediately PyCharm would open the terminal, the remote terminal. As you can see over here, we are connected to the Ubuntu VM. Let me clear everything, type ls. So we don't have anything over here. First, what we are going to do, we are going to create a directory named python debugging. There actually we will upload our code and there we will perform the debugging. So let me run a set of commands to set up the initial environment. Create the python hyphen debugging directory. It's created. Install the python 3 virtual environment. In my case, it is already installed. That's why it did not take much time. In your case, the situation could be different. Now, I am going to create a virtual environment here using python3. So this python-debugging-virtual environment, this is the location where my virtual environment is created. Now we are going to set up the SSH interpreter and this SSH interpreter what it would do? It would use this virtual environment and it would use this python-debugging folder as the project directory. So let us create an SSH interpreter. For that, we need to go to File, Settings, and under Project colon Python hyphen debugging, let me expand. Click Python interpreter. So we have the default interpreter here. Right now, we don't need this. So for that, click Show all. I want to get rid of this so that it does not create any confusion. Click the plus icon. Here, we need to select the SSH interpreter. If we have existing configuration, we can click over here, but we are going to create everything from the beginning. So let me enter the information here. Host, user ID, click next. Even the password here as well, click next. Now, adding the Python interpreter, this part is important. So first is the interpreter. By default, it is giving one particular location, but we have already created the virtual environment and there we are going to set our interpreter. So for that, Click over here. This is the remote host where we have connected. What I am going to do over here, I am going to the home directory, then the username VM admin, and this is my virtual environment, right? Dot VNV, which we created, and there Python hyphen debugging hyphen VN. So here, if I scroll down under bin, I am going to point to this Python. So the interpreter part is done. Now coming to the running of the code. If you see this section sync folders with the project root, we have the mapping to this temp location. So by default PyCharm is going to upload whatever code we have under python hyphen debugging here. But we are not going to use this particular location. Rather than the python hyphen debugging folder that we created, we would point to that we will upload our code to that location only and from there we will debug. So let me click over here. Let me expand this bit further. Select the remote path. What I can do, I can click here. Home. VM admin. Python debugging. So this is my location. Right now it should be blank. I'm pointing to that. Click on OK. So my project root and the remote location both are set correctly. And the next checkbox, this is also very important, automatically upload project files to the server. Why this is important? Suppose we are making some changes in the local files, right? And we want to sync it to the remote directory. We can sync it separately, but if we keep this checked, automatically PyCharm will take care of that. Click finish. Now, if I click OK from here, apply, OK again. Now PyCharm is taking care of uploading all the code and etc. So it will take at least few minutes depending on your internet connectivity and uh, your machine configuration. I'm going to pause the video for a while. Once this is done, we will resume the video.
Once PyCharm completes all the file upload and etc., you will get a message like upload to the host name completed and the number of files transferred. Now we are all set and one thing I need to do, I have certain dependencies mentioned in the requirement.txt file. I am going to install them in the remote system. Now how? Right click, install all packages. So what PyCharm is doing, it is installing all the required libraries of the modules in the remote system. This one also would take a while. I am going to pause the video and we will be back once this is complete. Now all the libraries are successfully installed. We are all set. Let me run a simple code on the remote directory using the SSH interpreter. Let me open the demo package, open any particular code, average underscore calculation and I am just running it. Right click, run average calculation. Now if you see the output over here, right, this SSH colon VM admin, so it is running this on the remote host using the SSH interpreter we just configured. Now how to debug? The way we debug normally, similar thing, right, we have this SSH interpreter set that is attached to that particular project. So if we run or debug, it will take care and it will run the entire thing on the remote system. So right click, debug, like the normal debug, the breakpoint is hit. Now everything is happening on the remote system using the SSH interpreter. So this is one part what we saw like how to debug in the remote system using SSH interpreter. This is for a simple Python code. We are going to check another thing. We are going to debug a Flask based application into the remote system using SSH interpreter also. So let me close the debug session and I have one flask based application here under problem solving, advanced, solutions. So this is the flask CRAD application. Let me open the directory. Here there are two important files. One is create underscore db dot pi and flask underscore app dot pi. So create db is basically the script which creates the database and populates with some data. Let me right click on this, run create underscore db. So create db is run successfully. Now the important part we need to run this flask underscore app dot py. For that we need to set up the configuration and we need to set it up carefully because if there is some mistake it won't run properly and there would be lot of confusion. So go to edit configurations. Now here instead of script path we need to provide module name and under the module name we need to type flask. Select this, give run as parameter. Here under environment variables we should be adding this. So what we have apart from python buffer equal to 1 we have flask underscore app that is flask underscore app dot py the file that we had and flask underscore env equal to development. Python interpreter is a remote one and be very careful about the working directory. It should be the location where my flask hyphen crud directory is. Now we are done. Click on apply. Click on ok. So we are going to use this particular configuration. Remember not the average calculation or not the create db1. We are going to use this flask configuration. What we have done over here, if I go again, I want to be very careful so that you don't make any mistake. We have the module name, we have the parameters, we have the environment variables and this we are going to use while we are running this flask application. So right click debug flask underscore app. As per the console, it is running in debug mode in this particular port. What I am going to do, I am going to select this particular URL, copy this particular URL and from the remote terminal, I am going to run a curl command. So if I go to the terminal, here I am in the remote VM. Let me clear all this out and I am going to place a breakpoint over here so that if I do a curl, the request should hit over here. This is the landing method, right? Let's run the curl. Now you can see the breakpoint is hit. If I go to the console, it's waiting. Let me do a resume over here. Now we can see the request flow is there.
so in this way we created an ssh interpreter we have set up the code we are able to debug simple python programs as well as flask based web applications